in the midst of all of this, where are the people of faith? Like while all this crazy stuff is happening on Judgment Day, what happens to the people of God, to the followers of Jesus, to those who remain? That takes us to the seventh angel. I don't know about you, but I'm like, gosh, this is getting deep. This is getting thick. This is just brutal. He brings destruction unlike any other. This, this angel brings destruction unlike any other. I wish I had the time to just focus here, but I don't. But here's what I want to share with you. Verse 17, the seventh angel poured out his bowl of wrath into the air. And a loud voice came out of the temple from the throne saying, it is done. I love that. Does that remind you of what Jesus said on the cross? He is on the cross absorbing the wrath of God for every single person who has ever sinned. And they're nailing his feet to the cross. They're nailing his hands to the cross. And it gets to the point where he's about to die. He is in utter agony. And he cries out, the scripture says, in a loud voice. And what does Jesus say? He says, it is finished. Gosh, that's beautiful. This angel pours out his bowl, this final angel, and it goes into the air. Ephesians 2, 2 tells us that Satan is the prince and the power of the air. The wrath of God is poured out on him and the city, this great city, is split into three parts, and all of the nations fall. But right here, the truth is, the reality, Babylon the Great, this city that has been known to persecute the people of God for years and years and years, Babylon's the focus. And it says that Babylon will certainly drink the fury of God's wrath. You can read more about that in Jeremiah 51. Babylon will absolutely no more have this power. God is coming for his people to avenge them and to get glory himself. When this angel pours out this wrath in the air, listen what happens. Islands disappear. It's like the earth is coming to nothing, you guys. Like islands completely just disappear. Mountains are no more. No more mountains. Think about Colorado. See ya. Can you imagine? They're gone. It says that, that hailstones that weigh about 100 pounds each just start falling from the sky onto people. I can't even imagine. In all the economic systems and political structures and financial processes and spiritual deceptions of Satan are extinguished and are eliminated. And yet the people continue to curse God instead of come near him. There's going to be destruction like, unlike any other, like almost indescribable on judgment day. Who's excited about Judgment Day? Let's just see some hands here, right? Who's just, I can't wait for that day. I've got some people that I hope those hailstones fall on. I work with them. I go to school with them, right? I mean, I've already got them in my mind's eye, right? Now, the question for us is this. What, in the midst of all of this, where are the people of faith? Like, while all this crazy stuff is happening on Judgment Day, what happens to the people of God, to the followers of Jesus, to those who remain? What happens to them? Are they cowering, like running for their lives, looking up at all that's happening, just trying to find some escape from all of this stuff? Are they crying out to God? Are they trembling in fear? Are they shrinking back, just hopeful that, that all would just end, and they're just in prayer, like, like face down before? Is that what they're doing? No, that's not what they're doing. Back to chapter 15. Let me show you. This is so good. 
verses 2 through 4, And I saw what appeared to be a sea of glass mingled with fire, and also those who had conquered the beast and its image and the number of its name. And what are they doing? Those who have conquered the beast are standing beside the sea of glass with harps of God in their hands. And they sing. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and they sing the song of the Lamb. And here's how that goes. Great and amazing are your deeds. O Lord God, the Almighty, just and true are your ways, O King of the nations. Who will not fear, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship you for your righteous acts have been revealed. What are the people of God doing? It's a crazy day, isn't it? Here's what the people of God are doing. Followers of Jesus stand in victory. They aren't scared of wrath. Followers of Jesus are singing. They aren't shaking in fear. If you're a follower of Jesus, you have no reason to fear the wrath of God. Amen? You don't have to fear it because Jesus has, has absorbed it on your behalf. And now you stand as a son, as a daughter, as chosen, as forgiven, as redeemed, as new. There's no need to fear. That's what all these movies in Hollywood and all this this, this other things that, that, that we tend to look at in pop culture when it comes to this time in human history, it's all about fear. Listen, the people of faith have no need to fear because we have Jesus and he has beaten all of this by rising from the grave after Satan tried to pour out all of his wrath on him. Amen. So here's your action steps today. Who needs a Savior? I don't want anybody to experience what's coming on that judgment day. And neither should you. So who needs a Savior? You can be saved from this day. Jesus is like, hello, I'm here. I'm stepping forward on your behalf. Let me take all your sin. Just turn to me. Who needs to do that? If you've already done that, then here's what I want to encourage you to do. Stand. Stand victoriously. Not because of anything you've done, but because of everything Jesus has done for you. No need to fear. Stand. And lastly, sing. Sing. Every day day sing to him because he has saved you and he has good for you and he loves you and he has rescued you from wrath 